Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman, here on Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest mountain in Africa. On this edition of Eco News, we hike to Uhuru Peak. Helping us are guides and porters from Simba Safaris, based here in Tanzania. Our eco tour has been arranged by Cultural Vacations and Safaris, based in Orlando, Florida. This trek is a once in a lifetime adventure. <laughs> My name is Silvano Stewart, the guide for Kilimanjaro for Simba Safari and Cultural Vocations. I'm here to support you guys to be the top of Africa. Today we are going to start hiking. Here is the main gate of Marango National Park, elevation of 1,800 meters. But we'll be hiking on Montana Forest. From this point, we are going to end today, the, just our day one, to the Mandara Hut, which we are supposed to hike like three hours, which we are going to end the elevation of 2,700. But tomorrow, we'll be hiking moorland zone. So we'll be hiking from Mandara Hut, elevation of 2,700 meters. That's from Mandara to Horombo, which is a elevation of 3,720 meters. Day three, we stay at Horombo, but we are going to make little acclimatizing going to Zebra, and we'll be back again to the Horombo hut, elevation of 3,720. Day four, we'll be hiking from Horombo to Kibo, about five hours, which we are going to end at the elevation of 4,720 meters, and we are going to walk on the zone which we call the Alpine zone. At the midnight, we'll be walking this midnight or beginning of day five. We'll be walking from Kibo Hut, hacking the steepness to touch the first peak, which we called Gilman Point, which we expect to hike about five hours. Kibo, passing Gilman Point, and you manage to conquer Uhuru Peak, which is more than you have to hike about one hour and a half. It means you'll be reaching to the elevation of 5,895 meters. That's ice cap. You are going to have, you are a strong person. You made to be the top of Africa and you are going to receive gold certificate. So gold certificate will be provided only once a person be managed to reach at the Uhuru Peak or Stella Point. Here at the headquarters where we're beginning our climb, I can see that we are at 6,400 feet, but in a few days, we're going to be at the top of Africa at 19,620 feet. We also have different kinds of ecosystems, from forest to moorland, alpine desert, and of course, the ice caps. You say we can begin here? We can begin here, this direction here, and then uh, the porters are going to begin on the other side. Behind me here is the point where our porter tend to make registration. They are working so hard. Yeah. They're carrying packs on both sides just so I can relax and have fun. And it's not heavy, very light for me, it's like a two kilograms. So it's really I'm heavy. I'm going to with it, not heavy. Really. It's probably He's about 25 pounds. He's a liar. <laughs> You got to the top. We did get to the top, yes, both of us. Um, it was it was a good experience. Did you make it to the top? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so which country won? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> there are so many beautiful plants here in this rainforest. What is this beautiful purple flower? A passion Kilimanjaro species. It's in Dominican Kilimanjaro. It's found and can grow only in Montana forests. Only here we had to come all the way to Tanzania to see this special flower. What about some of these other plants? These are the first size tree kids. survive only in other trees. So when it becomes more a lot, a lot of other trees, then the prominent tree, the mother tree, tend to die.
Um, and I was crazy enough to have this man summit this with me. And right around before sunrise, he gets down on bended knee and asks me to marry him. Yep. By the time you get to the very top, that is Uhuru Peak, you've gone through a lot of challenges and different types of terrain. And uh, for those who are not familiar with the altitude, they tend to suffer quite a bit, but it's worth the experience. To the summit, it was uh, awesome, but the probably the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. But I'm so proud and I'm loving the mountain. They've treated us like VIPs. And the people at Climb Killy have been really good, very knowledgeable. They, uh, when we were walking up the mountain, it was so difficult, it was so hard. I wanted to quit so many times and they would start singing songs. And they would have our name and they'd call out our name and sing the song and encourage us to keep on going. And we finally made it to the top and it was, it was really an awesome experience. We have hiked through this beautiful forest and now it's time for some lunch. And I thought it might just be a little snack, but there's a full lunch box. Guava juice. We have fresh banana. We have some fresh nuts. Even a samosa. Samosa. Potatoes. What is this, cake? Cake. And what is in here? Buns. It's a bun? Yeah, it's like a... And an yeah. egg? Yeah. So much food! When they asked us what kind of lunch to prepare, they made sure that every kind of meal taste was taken care of. You could order vegetarian or meat, and a variety of all of it. The signs here tell us where we're going to be sleeping this evening. I really don't think they're necessary because our guides and assistant guides are making sure we don't get lost. Plus, there's only one trail. This is the halfway point for the first day. It's so beautiful to walk on the trail. This one are the parasite. You can't differentiate it between leaves and its fruits. It depends its food from the other trees like this one. But when it grow much and much, then the tree tend to die. As you go now, it looks like near to green, but as you go up near to Mandara Hut, or up to Mandara Hut as we go up, then this parasite changes color and become like white one. So that flower that is called the Labella de Cane. It's in Dominican flower for both zones. That's Montana Forest and Moland Zone, which we are going to hike tomorrow. For Montana forests, it's go more higher and become more longer like this. It, it doesn't produce fruits. But tomorrow, when we go up, we can see it will be more shorter and it produces produce fruits like a pineapple, but not real pineapple. The characteristics of this flower, when it makes a fruit like pineapple, it tends to open during the day and during the night close. because we are so close to Moland Zone and that one is called Kandos Kinesis. Here in Montana Forest is more taller. As we go up in Moland Zone, it becomes more shorter. We've been hiking for a few hours from the main gate through a very dense forest. And all of a sudden, this opening with these very attractive huts and I even see solar panels. It's going to be a nice night. Here at our wonderful hut, we have beds, even lights because of the solar panels. And our porters have provided hot water, almost too hot to wash. Even here okay, on Kilimanjaro, we have high tea. Kilimanjaro tea bags are waiting for us. What are we having for dinner? Fish, soup, potatoes, everything's fresh. I feel so great after my first night sleeping on Kilimanjaro. The huts are wonderful. Mattresses, pillows, comfortable, hot water in the morning. We're here in the hut. We've just packed, getting my sunscreen on. They've even provided green bags to protect it for any weather conditions. 
The porters are waiting outside to carry all our things to the next hut. This is luxurious hiking. The camp is just bustling. Everybody's getting ready for this day's hike. Everybody is doing something. There are even monkeys here. It's look different here now. It's begin the moorland zone. You see, it look different between that's the Montana forest and this part is moorland zone. So when you look at it, it means it looks like somebody make the boundary of this. But really, no one has been make this trees this uh, there naturally and the tall trees in Montana forest that's a heritage are uh, there naturally. Those trees, the, the trees that are available in Moorland zones are called Erika Borea trees are so dominant and so endemic in Kilimanjaro so that you're going to walk in this part and as all we go up this tree become more shorter and shorter and until we'll be walking in Alpine desert. Why is it all of a sudden such a sharp change? Is there an elevation difference? It's just because of the elevation and because of the rocks as you go up, as you know, these mountains are volcanic zones. So other parts of the mountain, there is a lot of rocks where the plants cannot survive so, so quickly. And as you go up to the high elevation, then the tree change due to the humidity and become more shorter and shorter. Montana forest which look more green but now change the color and become more white it's just because of the elevation as it go up this parasite tend to grow a lot and when it become more a lot and a lot in the trees then the trees tend to die another thing features which you're going to enjoy in Montana forest as we go up now and somehow we can be above the clouds and also we have another flower which is Dominic one in Kilimanjaro which are Protea Kilimanjaro this day too, just yes, we've done hiking like well, half an hour from the camp of Mandara. We are going to Horombo. Here is the moorland zones. The trees just available here are Erika Borea trees. I'm standing in front of the Mayundi crater, one of two craters here on Kilimanjaro. This is the smaller one in the moorland region. Here is a part of moorland zones. We are still hiking on moorland zones. And these parts have been destroyed like eight months ago. There is a occurrence of a fire here. Somebody threw a piece of cigarette and caused the fire to arise here. It was very good luck for us because after three days from the occurrence of the fire, it was raining here and helped to stop that fire to happen. But now is the end of short wet season. You can see the grass now are starting to grow up and bring another feature of green as we usually tend to see in this part of Moorland Zone. This is another flower that's found in Moorland Zone. It's called Lobella de Kenny. I get my first glimpse of our destination, the top of Africa, Uruuru Peak, and we see our first glaciers, the snows of Kilimanjaro. We have a very good time. We're going down again and take a beer and relax. Good luck for everyone. I'm in Kilimanjaro and I've done it! Yay! And behind of me you can see one of tree which is a very scarce survival in this part. We call it Anot. And you can see it, it looks black. It's just because there is fire 18 months ago. Like this one here. Uh, still it's called Erika Borea trees. That's a found in moorland zones. At the beginning point of Boland Zone, this was looking so tallest and very green. But as you go up, change the situation now and become more shorter because of how humidity as you go up, the vegetation tend to change. This plant is normal plant, thus is not in Dominican Kilimanjaro. It's foxes and also is a local medicine for Kilimanjaro. You can boil this and you can drink that water. It's a treatment of stomach when the stomach is crumbling. Then you can use the, this leaf here, you can use it. This small flower here, we call everlasting flower. It's everlasting flower because it grow all region. Montana region, Moorland region, and Alpine desert. Seniors can do it. 
but uh, they have a hard time, let me tell you. And they got people helping them. And the crew we had, of course, was outstanding. Now the best piece of advice that I got was, don't stop at Gillian's Point, because that's where most people turn back. Um, it gets easier after that. And we had a great time with a great guide. And these are my uh, two lovely daughters, Jenna and Iman. Hi. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 19. This protective manjarika, it has four stages. The first stage, it forms with small fruits, which is green like that one you see it. And later, the second one, it forms with white flower like that one you see it. And last stage, it close again and become dry and look this like as if somebody has burned it. This flower survives only in Montana zone. This flower cannot be grow in Mosh Town just because of altitude. It survives in a cold place like this place here. I love the expanse of this moorland. I feel so free and so open and the views are everywhere. Behind to me you can see hill, we call it cultural tourism or cultural hill because traditionally our elders tend to come on that part. At the middle of it there is a hole like a plate which we tend to make a lot of sacrifice. The sacrifice which we tend to do there, sacrifice of goat, sacrifice of cow and we put some other alcohol like mbege for our tribe Chaga language to make those sacrifices good and acceptable to our elders. Here at Harumba Huts, we're going to take an extra day to relax and acclimatize, sightsee in some of the surrounding area, and just continuously enjoy this fantastic view. We are here at Rombo Hut. This is a day three for us. We are staying here, just relaxing, and later we are going to acclimatize a little bit. This part here is help of the station, but we don't expect somebody to be sick, but this is for precaution. In case of somebody who has been suffering from mountain sickness so seriously, we have to call the helicopter to pick him or her from this point to go back to Mosh Hospital, KSMC Hospital, where there is a professional doctors for treatment of mountain sickness. So we are still here hiking on moorland zones. Behind of me you can see the endemic flower of Kilimanjaro that survived in moorland zone is called Jans National Kilimanjaro. This flower is endemic one and it's characterized by when it tends to grow where there is a source of stream of water. This flower survives only on this zone, moorland zones. Montana forest cannot survive. In most town there, like elevation of 800 meters cannot survive. So that's why you see it's arranged like a stream, like a garden somebody planted, but that's not real. That's there by nature. Even though we don't have to carry a full backpack, it is still important to be in shape to hike Kilimanjaro. Go out, walk, jog, run, be able to do a few miles a day and do some elevation because we are hiking a few thousand feet, but it's worth it. Look at these zebra rocks. After a delightful hike, we stop here for a picnic lunch, so much delicious food, fruits, sandwiches, peanuts, and fresh juice. But I'm just in awe of this 360 degree view of Kilimanjaro. Wow!
Here we are here in Mount Kilimanjaro. This mountain is volcanic one, but now is not no longer active. Behind of me is zebra rock. Most of the rocks here that's found in mountain in this mountain are volcanic one. Okay, thank you, Mama, oh, for yesterday. Thank you. I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Santa Santa. Oh. Santa Augustino Santa Sana. hiked down four hours to a place where he could charge our battery and seven hours back up all in one day just to help us. Amazing. Thank you, thank Asante you. Sana, Santa Sana. We are walking with a light load, a day pack, just what we need. And these porters are carrying over 50 pounds. Now we are so close to the top of Africa. You can see the huge glacier, Redman Glacier. That glacier in previous years is so huge, it come half to the peak. But right now it's just a shrinkage due to the climate change. 13,500 feet. We have it all here. We have now entered our second to last ecosystem, the Alpine Desert. It's open, the vegetation is sparse, it's still here. And we see our final ecosystem, the ice caps, tomorrow morning. Here at Kibo Hut, we prepare for our final ascent to the top of Africa. 15,520 feet here. We'll be climbing over 4,000 feet in six hours. And then another two hours to get to the top part of Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest peak. Another two and a half hours down. So I'm gonna get some rest, eat dinner, get some more rest, 11 p.m., breakfast, midnight, we go up that screen shoot in the dark. At midnight, we left. We had finally arrived at 6 a.m. to see the sunrise at this World Heritage Site on Mount Kilimanjaro, Gilman's Point. We still have another hour and a half climb. That grueling scree takes quite a lot of effort. Six hours nonstop. They don't let you rest. You've got to get to the top of this mountain, but it is definitely worth it. So great to get to top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Now we're heading down. I have just returned from the top of Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro. We started at over 15,000 feet, got close to 20,000 feet, and we hiked nonstop for 11 hours. We went up the scree field in the dark after midnight. We came down real fast but it was non-stop. We saw the glaciers. I am so exhilarated from having done this. This is our final day of an incredible journey. We've had so much fun. Our last glimpse of the snows of Kilimanjaro. And now 12 miles to the base of Kilimanjaro National Park and then to Moshi. My whole life I've wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Even at 65, I finally did it. Hiking to Uhuru Peak on Mount Kilimanjaro here in Tanzania has been so exhilarating. 
Our eco trek has been comfortable because of the experienced guides and porters with Simba Safaris. I look forward to booking my next eco trek and adventure with Cultural Vacations and Safaris based in Orlando, Florida. On behalf of Educational Communications and Eco News, I'm Nancy Perlman wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment. Jumbo, woo! Jumbo, buana! Abarigani! Lizuri sana! Wageni! Mwakari bishwa! Kilimanjaro! Hakuna matata! Six days! I have climbed Kilimanjaro! I am now back at the Morongo Root Gate it's telling me congratulations and welcome. It feels good. A lot of miles, a lot of feet, a lot of hard work, but it's worth it. My dream come true.